Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship at FCCW on this snowy morning. I want you to feel warmly welcomed and enjoy your time among us. And I, we just have a few announcements. Uh, one is that there, there isn't any Sunday school today, so if anybody wants to go play with Sophie over there on the table, you can color and you can play games and um, just keep each other happy, okay? Um, the, let's see, the other thing. Uh, I will hold the sermon talk back today in the room at the end of the hall, the Sunday school classroom um, on this floor. So if you want to grab your coffee and, uh, or a treat and come on down, we'll just have a short 15, 20 minutes maybe uh, chat about what you might have questions about, what you might wonder about for Lent. And finally, uh, I'd like to ask Mike to come to the pulpit and explain what we have going on in the council. Mike. Good morning. Thank you. So uh, we met last week at, at council, and we had a, a, a long session. We, uh, you'll be getting a, a, a letter, either by email or by snail mail, uh, about some of the things that we uh, discussed and talked about. Uh, we, uh, uh, it, in, in summary, it's just kind of going over what we, what, what we all had this big discussion on February the 5th, the annual fiscal meeting, about in some of the steps that we want to take to try to uh, find ways to to meet our uh, to 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 ensure our financial stability so that that's that's the major part of it so uh, you'll be getting that probably tomorrow or the next day by email or snail mail uh I won't, so i'm not going to actually go over the the letter with you but uh, a couple of other things it, it, it when, in the letter uh you'll notice that there are three uh ad hoc committees uh that the council wants to set up one is a, a financial advisory committee of those folks that feel like that have some financial knowledge and wherewithal to help us to, to kind of figure out where we are now and, and the things that we can do to try to uh, move ahead uh, with, our, with our financial stability. The second is a membership committee, uh, subcommittee, to try to, to fi find ways to uh, include current members uh, in, in helping with this problem and also to, to uh, how we can go about increasing our, our, our membership roles as well. Uh, the third is the fundraising committee, which, uh, which is obvious that we need to find other sources of income. Uh, we need to plan ahead and, and find, uh, and, and hopefully with a fundraising committee that we've had in the past, we're just going to be sure it gets reinstituted after COVID. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to invite uh, anyone in the congregation that's interested in one of these three committees, uh, plus an additional committee I'll mention in a minute, to uh, to volunteer and uh, we'll uh, next next uh, on 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 next Sunday, March the fifth, the council will meet again to kind of consolidate and and set up these the memberships of these committees. So I would appreciate you uh, coming forward if uh, if you're interested. Um, my uh, email and, and phone uh, my cell phone is in the letter is in the letter uh, that you'll be getting uh, so that you can either contact me through that either through email or, or by phone 
uh, if you're if you're interested, or if you have any comments or questions, uh, they're more than welcome as well. The uh, the other things that we did is that we uh, is that the properties committee has uh, been searching for quite a while about uh, our our lighting problem. Uh, when the building was built, we had fluorescent lighting on the first and second on the second third floors. Unfortunately, fluorescent lights are not the end thing anymore. It's, uh, you can't really can't buy a lot of the fixtures or the ballasts. Uh, uh, without a, a great expense, so we've been looking to tr try to convert all of our uh, these, uh, I think, 17 or 18 lights to uh, from fluorescent to LED lights. And the and the committee's come up with a, a plan uh, that we're going to be able to do that for. Uh, for uh, I think we we voted it was 1600 about 1600 dollars to change the lights and the ballast and, and all those in the, to make everything LED, which will save us a, a tremendous amount of money in particular electrical costs, but it will really save us a lot of money if we, if we do it all at one time, which it would cost us over $10,000 if we did it kind of piecemeal. As one fails, we do it. One fails, we do it. Because primarily because of the, uh, uh, the, the people that are fixing are, are from Manchester and we get to pay, we, we have to pay them mileage and their time for, for travel. So it's going to be a lot less expensive to do it all at one time. And so council uh, approved that uh, suggestion or that uh, uh, from the, the properties committee. Uh, the diaconate basically also brought forth a uh, uh, wanting to reinstitute uh, communion uh, in a more normal way as we had prior to, to COVID. So they're working on that. And, uh, and uh, next week we'll see what they come up with. Uh, uh, there are a couple of committees, family care is, uh, and uh, faith in action are both planning uh, luncheons after church. Uh, family care on May the 7th is planning to have a fundraising uh, uh, luncheon uh, just prior to the uh, Clear Lakes concert, and then on uh, on April the second, Faith in Action is going to have a, a luncheon to uh, to draw people together to hear uh, Miss Rather Stoddard's uh, going to be back to have another discussion about uh, her, her program that we, she presented last week. Uh, the uh, uh, you may have noticed uh, several weeks ago we had three or four weeks worth of uh, ad, uh, asking the congregation in the uh, weekly happenings about you know what if you if you watch uh, watch our service on TV uh, do you watch WC TV channel 25 which is local access versus uh, the YouTube uh, we got s uh, several uh, 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 replies we were averaging about 40 people a week. Uh, are watching the the YouTube uh, on 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 our uh, of our service, but uh, we have no indication about WCTV. No one po responded positively to to watching WCTV. Our times of watching WCTV for years has been 3 a.m. and 3 p.m., which is uh, not the most conducive times to watch the service. So uh, we elected to uh, withdraw from WCTV. Uh, but we will continue on the YouTube because that's the one that m almost everyone that we know of tends to use. Uh, the last thing is, uh, you know, when we last weekend we had a uh, uh, Friends of Music uh, concert here, which I hear was excellent. Uh, w one of the things that uh, we're looking forward to, and we've tried to set this up in the past without much success, is I'd we would like to set up a little committee of what we call building hosts. Uh, so that when we have a concert, that some, there would be someone that would come in and open the building, uh, and do you know just kind of kind of uh, look over the place while uh, the uh, outside group is using it. Uh, that would be primarily for concerts in the sanctuary. So if you have any interest in helping us out with that, uh, the deacons have kind of been doing it in the past, which uh, you know they have enough to do. They don't they don't need to be opening the building for for, for our concerts. So uh, that would be a, another committee that you could certainly help us with if, if you so choose. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the choir today, our communion anthem is a prayer of St. Francis and they have asked if we could dedicate uh, today's 
communion, uh, offertory anthem to the memory of Joan Jonkus, who passed away recently. Joan uh, sang in the choir for many, many years. She was a choir director herself, and I'm sure that she is now singing in the heavenly choir. She prepared herself in hospice by doing her own nails and being ready for the Lord's choir. Please join in the call to worship. God of the Sahara and the Amazon, maker of dry places and wetlands, we come, we come before, before you with parched hearts, hearts for, living for living in this world, world has made them so. Holy One, your ability to renew us is unmatched. You, you renew us from, from within and without. without. Ancient of days, you held us in the beginning you are holding us now. We reach out to you and draw as close as we can. And now let us sing hymn number 202 in the black hymnal, O God, How We Have Wandered. Oh, 
Please join in the unison prayer of invocation and the Lord's Prayer. Divine One, we are thankful for the restoration that can be found in you. Your presence is welcomed here. We delight in knowing that you want to be wherever we are. Because you are love, you show up for us. In this place, space, may we delight in your assurance that all you made is good. Hear our praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, I th can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, let us uh, listen now for the word of God. And I'm reading today, you, you've got your Bibles out. Um, I also am reading from the message translation, which I read to you from last week, and a lot of people liked that. So I'm going to read from that, but you can follow it along in, in the NRSV. Now, the serpent was clever, more clever than any wild animal the God had made. He spoke to the woman, do you understand that God told you not to eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, not at all. We can eat from the trees in the garden. It's only about the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, don't eat from it, don't even touch it, or you will die. And the serpent said, or told the woman, you won't die. God knows that the moment you eat from that tree, you'll see what's really going on. You'll be just like God knowing everything and ranging all the way from good to evil. When the woman saw that the tree looked like good eating and realized what she would get out of it, she'd know everything. And she took and ate the fruit and then gave some to her husband. And he ate. Immediately, the two of them did see what's really going on. They saw themselves naked. They sewed fig leaves together as makeshift clothes for themselves. That is the reading from Genesis. And from Matthew 4, 1 through 11, Next, Jesus was taken into the wild by the Spirit for the test. The devil was ready to give it. Jesus prepared for the test by fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. That left him, of course, in a state of extreme hunger, which the devil took advantage of in the first test. He said to Jesus, since you are God's son, Speak the word that will turn these stones into loaves of bread. And Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy, It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. For the second test, the devil took him to the holy city, he sat him on top of the temple and said, Since you are God's son, jump. And the devil goaded him by quoting Psalm 91. 
He placed you in the care of angels. They will catch you so that you won't as much as stub your toe on a stone. And Jesus countered with another passage from Deuteronomy. Don't you dare test the Lord your God. For the third test, the devil took him to the peak of a huge mountain. He gestured expansively, pointing out all the earth's kingdoms, how glorious they all were. Then he said, they're yours, lock, stock, and barrel. Just go down on your knees and worship me, and they're yours. Jesus' refusal was curt. Beat it, Satan. He backed his rebuke with a third quotation from Deuteronomy. Worship the Lord your God and only him. Serve him with absolute single-heartedness. The test was over. The devil left. And in his place, angels. Angels came and took care of Jesus' needs. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. May God bless to our understanding all our meditations and our voices. Amen. So, in case you haven't heard, here we are on the first Sunday of Lent, the season of penitence and pity. Over the years, any number of pastors have preached about humankind's accursedness. That's the hell, fire and brimstone message, a kind of teaching I think majorly misses the point and definitely misses God's good news for us. You know, it's no wonder that people, uh, that most of us would rather skip over this part and jump right over to Easter and not have to go through the messiness of the cross. But I tell you, I tell you this, if Jesus could not pass or resist the temptations in the wilderness, he never could have endured the cross. There is a purpose for this. If no cross, then no resurrection, no grace, and no glory. I am glad we are here, though, and our plan, well, my hope is to go through these 40 days and nights ahead of us, being open to the Spirit, asking the difficult questions, and realizing our own vulnerabilities in the course of our day-to-day -day life experiences and choices the choices that we make. Believe it or not, there is much good news. And it's such good news for us in Scripture that we read from authorized translations. It's wise to watch out for the celebrity translations where there are certain temptations to, for the author to point back to his own opinion and not so much God's truth. The message is an authorized translation, but there are so many. Reading God's word is unlike any other testimony you will ever receive or give so I've read to you this morning from Eugene Peterson's translation of the Bible called The Message. It's definitely not the wording 
we're all used to hearing over these many years of the first Sunday in Lent. Yet, there is the message that God so loves the world that we can glean from this time, this period of 40 days. The message that the Bible provokes us to identify with the people in the Bible as not at all that different from us. They speak like us, they function like us, they have the same needs we have, and they are prone to wander just like us. So let's picture ourselves, and not too vividly, um, picture ourselves like Adam and Eve unabashedly wandering throughout the garden paradise called Eden, smelling the sweet fragrances of fresh blossoms and salivating at the anticipation of biting into fresh and succulent fruit, only to have our eyes suddenly and unexpectedly opened and realized how painfully vulnerable we are to shame, to doubt. We realize we are naked without protection. And we want to cover ourselves. We are exposed. But the good news is, friends, is that these feelings are not the real problem. They're just the symptoms. They are either results of disobedience to God or distrust of God, which is what you see happening in the interchanges between Satan and Jesus on the mountain, on the pinnacle, and by the stones. Now let's imagine that gnawing hunger and that sizzling thirst that Jesus experienced after 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. He was not trying to pass the devil's tests. He was literally preparing to save all people from their sin. Jesus was exposed to the elements. He risked everything for us. By the end of Jesus' trial in the wilderness, he was extremely weak and exceedingly vulnerable. Yet, he was exactly where he needed to be. He needed every fiber of faith, every strength of consciousness over and above his physical suffering to face relentless, soul-grinding evil. Unless he could survive those things, how could he ever Face the cross. Jesus survives not only the harshness of the wilderness, but also the evil that most commonly leads us into temptation. Jesus overcame the temptations that plague us most. Each test Satan taunted before Jesus is symbolic of the sinfulness that takes so many people down. The difference is, Jesus was tempted, but he resisted because of three things. He trusted God's word as the truth. He was devoted to God's will, and he was committed to God's way. With the first temptation, the devil knows Jesus is famished, so he takes this opportunity to prey on the Lord's vulnerability. And isn't that when we 
get hooked, when we're vulnerable, and someone take it, takes advantage of it. The devil says, if you are God's son, then tell these stones to turn to bread. Go ahead, Jesus, Satan taunts. Be hungry no more. Use your power to satisfy your own needs. God can wait. But Jesus responds to the test with scripture, advice we could use that people shall not, shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So you see, Jesus has not succumbed to personal need. For the second temptation, Satan has whisked Jesus to the top of the highest pinnacle in the temple in Jerusalem. And he says, if you are the son of God, then throw yourself down. For it is written, and we notice here that the words that the devil is using are the words of God too. He, devil knows scripture. It's from Psalm 91, 11 and 12. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And standing on the pinnacle of the temple, Jesus does not give in to evil's pull on his person's soul. Do not put the Lord your God to the test, he said. It's quoting scripture again. In the third temptation upon the highest mountain, Satan offers Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. If Jesus will bow down, will bow his knee to Satan and not to God. Satan seems to have forgotten that Jesus already has a kingdom. That he's already a king. He has no need of temptation. Today as we wander fully into Lent, let us not be sorrowing, for God's promises to us are sure that because of Jesus Christ, no matter our human weaknesses of pride, hunger for power, or desires for piles of possessions, that no matter our hunger for the choicest fruits for which we may or may not have labored, no matter our thirst for control and power and pride in ourselves, God claims us and has a message for us. No possessions and no amount of possessions on earth could ever come close to what God has prepared for us in the kingdom of heaven. It's love's paradise that awaits us. When Jesus went to the cross, he suffered and he died there, not so that he could be called a martyr, a failure, but so that Jesus could give the very best he had away so that we might gain it all. Jesus is the word that God spoke over the paradise that God created. Jesus is the Savior that God sent lower so that we can be higher than the pinnacles of the holy temple. Jesus is the living word, and the word is with God, and the word is God. Christ makes us priceless. Wherever we wander this Lent, let's make sure we have Jesus by our side. Amen? Amen. Our next hymn is Take Up Your Cross, number 204. <clears throat>
You may be seated. Thank you all for, for sharing, and let us be together in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for the gift of you this season. How good it is that you know our hearts so fully, so deeply, and that we have a need for rhythms in our lives and seasons in our faith journey. Draw us into a deeper communion with you throughout these 40 days. Lord, we know that there is more to your story than is visible to the human eye. You created man and woman from the dust at the very beginning of time, and you breathed life into them to transform them into living creatures. We know that you are the resurrection and the life your very self went to the cross to show us that no death is final and that ultimate transformation comes through your gift of salvation. May we walk through this season intentionally, removing distractions that take our gaze away from your glory. We are thinking this morning of the Casa children that that Francie helps, and especially the two who've had issues with mental health and are now being cared for in that way. We want to continue to pray for the earthquake survivors in Turkey and Syria. So many dead in a few moments. And we pray for our, our Ukrainian brothers and sisters who continue to struggle after a year of being invaded. Lord, we pray for the end of war. We pray for the ceasing of suffering. We pray to carry the hope that our world so desperately needs and that we can share it and show it wherever we go, wherever we wander. And so God, may we walk through this season intentionally, removing distractions May we quiet the noise that pulls us from adoration of you and puts our attention on lesser things. May we simplify where we have been stressed. May we surrender what has burdened us. And may we, we repent of what has been sinful. Lord Jesus, may we see your goodness and your glory in new ways throughout this season of Lent. We desire to know more fully the depths of your love for us. Draw us ever closer to your heart so that we might know you better and understand you more clearly. We pray that we would not only give things up for Lent, but also give you glory throughout Lent, Lord, and all the days beyond. May our actions reflect our hearts. And may we worship you through all that we say and do. We pray in the name of the one who came, who was tempted, and was victorious on the cross, the one who saved us all. Amen. <laughs>
God gives good things to us, so let us give good things to God. Let us bring gifts that can be like water in dry places. May these resources be used to testify to the goodness of God. Our ushers will wait upon us now.
Let's join together in our prayer of dedication and thanksgiving. Divine One, receive our gifts from the open hearts from which we give them. Thank you for your blessing us with gifts to share so that good works can abound. We offer our gifts gladly. May what we give be used to meet the needs of all. Amen. In the red hymnal, number 155, all glory, laud, and honor. How shall we benedict each other? How shall we say goodbye? We say goodbye with thanksgiving that we were able to be together. We say goodbye with love.